Happy Theros pre-release weekend, everybody. How are you doing tonight? I just got home from the pre-release event. Uh, I did start early. I'll, uh, <laughs> cause I gotta work in like nine hours, but I wanna get home and do this video and open one of the pre-release kits for you guys. Uh, I'll have to do the results and show you my deck and all that tomorrow night. I just, uh, yeah, I gotta get some sleep for work. So I wanted to get this up though, cause I wanted to be one of the first ones to show you what you get in the pre-release kits and open one of these on camera. So I know a few other people have already done it, but you know, I haven't. So here we go. Let's uh, let's break into this thing. I'm going to open the pre-release kit and then I'm also going to open one extra pack that I got at the pre-release for participating. Uh, as you see behind me, I do have two boxes and a few more pre-release kits uh, uh, to open in the next couple days here. So we're gonna do a lot of a lot of Theros this weekend. <laughs> so, so stay tuned if you're wanting to see a lot of the new cards. Let me tell you, there was a bunch of people that bought boxes, opening boxes at the pre-release tonight, and the pulls are insane. And after playing with this set a little bit tonight, this entire set is pretty beastly. I gotta admit, this is possibly one of the best sets I've seen Wizards do in quite a long time. Um, you know, obviously I've been out of the game for a while, but, you know, this set, even looking back at all the other sets that have come out in the past, like, 12 years and knowing the sets before that, this is definitely one of the best sets I've seen from them. So, I really, really like this set. Here's our spin-down die, our 20-side die. Ignore all that background noise. My cat decided he wanted to play with a plastic bag that I just threw on the floor that I carried all this home in. All right, let's, uh... Put our cards aside here. Um, here's our little divider that comes in the box. So your typical box, um, I don't like this box. I like it better than the than the throne box, but I still prefer the ones that hold the deck sideways, like the Core 2020 ones. I still prefer those. So just saying, if anybody at Wizards cares, I think we all prefer those. Let me uh, pull the, I think these are my arena codes. Let me pull those aside. Without trying to reveal that card until the last. Mm, all right. So, we got six packs in here. Six booster packs. And then, like I said, I'll open the extra one. Um, now, it's kind of funny. The uh, the boxes that my LGS had all have the Japanese-style packs, as you can see. This has got the kind of looser pack with the pull tab on it. But the uh, the pre-release kits all have the... I think these are American packs that are... Belgium or somewhere, somewhere else. They're made somewhere else. They're the regular kind of got to tear them open packs. So let's tear them open. So yeah, there was a, uh, the boxes are just dropping just madness. I mean, there's really good pulls just from everywhere. Oh, I heard a bump of the camera. Sorry. It's late. It's late. Forgive me. All right. We'll go through some of the commons. Um, I can't go through all of them, but we'll go through some of them. Trayton Wave Rider. This guy's a pretty cool uh, constellation. Underworld Rage Hound, Scavenging Harpy, Moss Viper. This guy's awesome. One drop, one one with Death Touch. Gotta love it. In green. Uh, Venomous Hierophant, another Death Touch. Uh, Chain to Memory. Hyrax Tower Scout. Satire's Cunning. Uh, Hero of the Pride. Just uh, Johnny decks are gonna be beastly. There's some great Johnny cards in here with these hero cards in white. All right, for our uncommons, we got Flanks Tactics. Uh, pretty good uh, pump spell. Target creature you can control gets plus one, plus two, plus one till end of turn. Each other creature you control gets plus one, plus one till end of turn. Um, Dreamstalker Manicore. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, Dreamstalker Manicore can get deals one damage to any target. He's a four, two for three. Not a bad little card, especially in a red deck where you're doing a lot of burn. Uh, Hydra's Growth. Oh, this this card is so awesome. I'm so disappointed that I did not get any of these in my, my deck because I did end up uh, running green in my uh, deck tonight. If I'd have gotten some of these, I think I would have done a lot better. Um, Enchant Creature, it's a one green, two colorless. Uh, when Hydra's Growth enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one -one counter on Enchanted Creature. At the beginning of your upkeep, double the number of 1-1 one -one counters on Enchanted Creatures. I've seen people using these, and I mean... They're ending up with like 156, 156, you know, <laughs> creatures within no time at all, it seems. Uh, Thassa's Intervention, uh, pretty good counter spell. Not too bad. I think I see an extra card in here. Oh, we got a foil. 
We got a dreadful apathy. So a common foil. This one's a good one. This is uh, basically the, this set's version of uh, pacifism. Enchanted creature can't attack or block, and you can actually exile enchanted creature. So one one green or one white and two colors. Now these lands. Let's talk about these lands for a quick second. Uh, well, I put these back somewhere else. Okay. Uh, these lands. When I first saw the pictures of them, I was like, "Oh God, that is hideous. What's up with the Yu-Gi-Oh things going on here?" But actually, now that I see them in person, I mean, I like them. They are they are really sharp looking. They're really classy looking. Uh, I'm pretty impressed by them. I really like the lands. I'm probably gonna. I'm probably gonna. You know stockpile a bunch of these full art lands just because I like them so much but uh I'll probably use these in like certain decks and then the other full arts I've got in other types of decks you know these seem to be a little more uh I don't know it's kind of more of a modern deck but I think these lands might fit in it better <laughs> all right anyway semantics um deny the divine another counter spell is what blue needs more control you know uh rapid flames Sentinel's Eyes, Underworld Charger. He's a, he's a pretty cool little creature. He's got escape. He's a three drop for a three, three. He can't block, but he escapes with a one, one counter on him. So he becomes a four, four when you escape him later in the game. Plummet, destroy a target creature with flying. This is very important in this set because there's not a lot of flyers, but there's certain colors that don't have any flyers, it seems. It's, it's really lopsided on the flyers. Flicker of Fate, Infuriate. Good old red pump spell. Thaumatage is familiar. Nice little, uh, speaking of flyers, nice little scry one, uh, one three for three artifact flyer. Uh, Venomous Hierophant again. Chain to Memory again. Okay, our uncommon's Mire Triton. Death Touch, uh, two drop, two one. When there's a battlefield, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard and you gain two life. So self mill, but at least you get some life out of it. And self-mill is actually helpful in this set because of all the escape cards. Impending Doom, Sweet Oblivion, speaking of mill, and Thassa's Oracle, nice. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is a rare I really love because this is an alternate win condition. I know it's got more text than any magic card in history, but basically you mill yourself at the beginning. Uh, when it comes into play, you look at the top X cards of your library, where X is your devotion to blue, put up to one of them on top of your library and the rest on the bottom of your library in any random in a random order. If X is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library, you win the game. Flat out win. So it's a two drop alternate win condition. And there's a lot of ways to mill yourself in this set and the other current sets right now. So I will be shocked if this card is not banned in a few weeks because somebody's going to build a brutal self-mill deck that's going to win with this thing. <laughs> Just saying. You heard it here first. Uh, gorgeous Mountain. And then a Spider Token. Yeah, that is nasty. Look at that guy. Ugh. Spider's bad. My theory with spiders is kill it first and then burn the house down. Um, I'm actually kind of recovering right now because I got... I live in Florida. I got bit by a brown recluse on the foot. Uh, last week. I'm still not able to wear shoes. So, yeah, spiders suck. Uh, Leona of the Lost Pride. Uh, Nullet of Hitting Coves. There's a lot of these blue guys that do decrease your mana costs on spells. Uh, one of the guys I was playing had a bunch of these, and it was, oh my god, he was dropping like six creatures in a turn. It was nuts. Uh, Hero of the Games. Another one of those hero cards. Check out check out those hero cards. They're gonna be they're probably gonna see some play in draft, especially. Um Raid Scar Berserker, another plummet. Uh Warbriar Blessing. Uh kind of a weak card, I think, but you know. Enchantments. Arena Trickster. Uh Pious Wayfarer. This one's probably gonna be huge. He's a one drop one two with constellation. Uh gives target creature plus one plus one until end of turn. Every time an enchantment enters the battlefield, well. 50% of this set is all enchantments, including the creatures. Have one more enchantment creature. So much constellation. It's crazy. There's no one. Okay. Hero of the Nyxborn. Glimpse of Freedom. Clothis Design. And Enigmatic Incarnation. I did a I did a sealed tournament on Arena earlier. And, like, I think I got 
two of these in the draft deck and then the prize packs that I got, there was like another two of them. I have a place out of these. I think it ain't good rares, but I got a place out of that stupid thing. Uh, another foil. And there's our planes, our full art planes. That's what those one those look like. The only thing that bugs me is is this over here. I keep thinking there's a cut on the card or the card's damaged. I think they that was pretty poor with the artistic uh, thing there. It just it's cut off, kind of kind of weak. So I don't know. That's just my opinion on the planes. I don't like the I don't like the plane just because of that. I'm sure I'll, I'll I'll not notice it after a while, but right now it's still bugging me. <laughs> so. Did you guys go to the pre-release this weekend? Did you, uh, tonight, did you uh, do anything? Did you did you have fun? Did you get some good pulls? Did you win? Did you lose? Let me know. Leave me a comment. Let me know how you did. Stern Dismissal, Next Born Brute. This guy, uh, pretty crazy. Five drop, seven three. His toughness is terrible, and he doesn't have any special abilities, but he's a pretty big attacker getting out there quick. Got to use it in some kind of combo, though. Heliod's Pilgrim. This card I really, really like. Uh, when Heliod's Pilgrim enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an aura card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. He's a three drop for a one, two, so that's not very great, but with the right stack deck, the right build, uh, he could be very, very effective. Um, Starlit Mantle, another flash card. There's a lot of flash auras and stuff in this set. They're brutal. Uh, this guy is a beast. He's one green, four colorless for a 5-3 trample. Other creatures you control have trample. Yeah, he came in handy tonight. I, I had him. Uh, Lampad, this guy. This guy's probably going to be one of the better commons in the set. I think this guy might actually be worth something. Um, he's a one, one black, one colorless, uh, one three, which is not bad. Uh, one colorless mana sacrifice a creature. Each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. That's each opponent. Commander, hello. Um, yeah, any kind of multiplayer, that's every opponent loses a life and you gain a life. So, that's pretty awesome. And uh, Altar of the Pantheon, He uh, this one reduces your, uh, or actually increases your devotion, which is, uh, devotion's huge in this set because the, the gods only take five devotion, but getting five devotion out quick is kind of a problem. Uh, plus, you can add one mana of any color. If you control a god, a demigod, or a legendary enchantment, you gain one life when you tap it for the one color. And it's only a three-drop artifact. Not bad, and it's common. Now, Leah's Huntmaster, Fruit of Tizarus. Tis this is one of my favorite cards in the set. One drop black, target player loses two life, and it has escape. For one black and three colors, let's say next exile three other cards from your hand. Uh, I played this in my, uh, my draft or my pre-constructed pre deck on Arena earlier, I was able to use this like four times, <laughs> four or five times in a couple turns against a player. Uh, that, that card's awesome because it keeps going back to the graveyard so you can keep escaping it unless they remove it. Um, Captivating Unicorn. Now our uh, uncommons are Faraka's Spawn. Decent little card. He escapes. Uh, Midomize Prophecy. Midomize? 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 Yeah, I don't know. Uh, one of the weaker ones. Uh, not too bad, but but I don't really think I'd stack it. But it is cheap. It's only one blue, one one colorless uh, for the uh, uh, saga. Nessian Horn Beetle. And our rare is Shire of the Sky. Each player who controls a creature with power four or greater draws a card, then destroy all creatures. It's a Wrath of God that might give you a card. So there's another one of those nice swamps. Yeah, I do like these. Uh, I do like these full arts. They really did grow on me pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, just for some reason, the first picture I saw, maybe it was just a just the way the uh, wizard did the picture on the on the uh, when they announced them, it just didn't look very good. Uh, most of these same uh, Riptide Turtle is a flash zero five defender for two. Could be pretty handy in draft, especially. Stampede Rider is pretty cool. Uh, trample, 2-3 two, three for a 3 drop. At the beginning of each combat, if you control a creature with four, power 4 or greater, Stampede Rider gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. Uh, Temple Thief, this is going to be a strong card in draft. Uh, Temple Thief can't be blocked by enchantment, enchanted creatures or enchantment creatures. So, he's 50% unblockable in this set. <laughs> Speaking of enchantment creature, there's the, uh, the big beast again that gives everything trample. Another one of those uh, cuts your spell cost down on your turn. Uh, or for each enchantment you control. Wow. But he's 7 drop. 5, 6. He probably won't see a lot of play. 
Irrelevant Revelers. Say that ten times fast. Or once. Final Death. If this was a black and two colorless, this card would be so strong, but five is just way too expensive. But it does exile target creatures, so you don't have to worry about the uh, escapes. Um, Elspeth's Nightmare. This one's okay. Um, I got it in my deck, but I ended up sideboarding it out after the first like couple of games because I just I don't think it was going to be as effective. Destroy target creature and opponent controls with power two or less is the first one. Second saga is a uh, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it. That player discards that card. Kind of cuts down your possibilities. Um, exile target opponent's graveyard. The third one is pretty good, but you got to wait three turns, and it's a black and two colorless. If it's a black and one colorless, and it was you may choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. That would be much, much better, but it's not. Uh, oh. Eutropia, that's a really good uncommon. Simic Colors, uh, three drop, two, two. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, put a one, one counter on target creature. That creature gains flying until end of turn. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then the Field of Ruin, good reprint. Everybody that's been stocking up on Field of Ruins to try and make money just got really mad. But, oh, the Dryad of Elysian Grove. This guy's pretty awesome. Uh, you may play an additional land on each of your turns. Lands you control are every basic land type in addition to their other types. I mean, five color, hello goodness. Three drop, two, four, two, so you can't be lightning bolted. So that's a great rare there. I like that guy. Oh, we got a rare foil in here. Uh, eat to extinction. This one's pretty good for this set. Uh, exile target creature or plane walk, planeswalker. Look at the top card of your library. You may put that card in your graveyard. I did have this in my deck that I ran tonight. It is very effective because it exiles the creature. Um, and it's a black and three color list. So a little bit pricey, but not too bad. Still playable. Uh, so good card. And now I got a foil one too. Yay. I'm good with that. And then the mountain. The mountain is awesome. I think the mountain's the best looking one of these new lands. I do like the mountain. And a go token. Where's Joey? Go to Lives Matter. <laughs> All right, one more pack, and then I'll open up the uh, my participation pack there. All right. There was like, God, there was 48 people at the pre-release tonight. My God, it was absolutely just packed. Um, Which is really the only reason I left early. If, if there had been less people and I'd have had a chance at placing after a couple losses i might have stayed but yeah well, there's no chance I, I lost the first two rounds so uh well i lost first one tied the second one uh triumphant surge starlet mantle but you're not supposed to know that Shh, you just forget that <laughs> wait till my wait till my video tomorrow right? <laughs> discordant piper he's kind of a cool he uh he's a two one two drop that uh when he dies you get a you get a goat token so you get an extra chump blocker after he dies so he's a double chump uh, Revelant Revelers, Final Death again, Fruit of Tizarus again, great card. Uh, Return to Nature, strong card in this set. Uh, one one green, one colorless, destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment, or exile target card from a graveyard. Good uh, utilitarian card there. Uh, Archon of the Falling Stars, Heroes of the Revel, Underworld Dreams. I like this card. I've always liked this card. This is a, this is a card from way back in the day that they... It was really, really brutal back then, but, you know, I just kind of lost favor, and now they reprinted it again. Plus, it really helps your devotion if you're playing black. Three three black pips in there. So, great card. And Ephemia, the Cacophony. This one's got some crazy art on it. You see that artwork? <laughs> it's like a, like a hawk, owl, vulture thing, chick. <laughs> Anyways, uh... Two drop, flying, two one. At the beginning of your end step, you may exile an enchantment card from your graveyard if you do create a two two black zombie creature token. Uh, one of the guys I played tonight had this thing and it was causing me some problems. I ended up having to kill it pretty quick because uh, I wasted a pretty big big kill spell on it just so I could get it out of there because he kept popping out blockers. And a foil of uncommon, the Meyer Triton. Nice, nice foily death touch guy. And then the planes with the stupid little slash on the side of it there, whatever. And a Pegasus token. All right. Now let's open up this pack, and then I'll let you guys go so I can go to bed. I'm tired. All right. So Japanese pull tab style. So imagine those boxes I got are all going to be these, because uh, it seemed like all the boxes that my LGS have were all the Japanese style packs. And see, they're backwards in the Japanese style packs. So now we got the commons on the bottom. So uh, <laughs> I'll... Uh, let me just, all right, we'll put the 
Yeah, we'll put token, rare, uncommon, uncommon, uncommon. There we go. That way we can go through it the same way. This is annoying. Hey, there's another uncommon. We must have had a flaw. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'll get this pack open eventually. You just wait. You just wait. Next born Colossus. Three drops, six, seven. Probably not going to see much play. Uh, Aspect of Manicore. Uh, it's a flash. A flash and Chaminora. That one might see some play. Plus two. Uh, it was used against me tonight. was very effective. <laughs> the first strike when you flash it in really kind of hurts. Another uh, Thaumatized Familiar. Infuriate again. Starlet Mantle. Uh, Karametra Blessing. It's probably going to be pretty brutal in this uh, set. And then Warbriar Blessing. I don't think that one's going to be that great. I could be wrong. Uh, Omen of the Hunt. It's okay. It lets you put another land into play. You can flash it in. Uh, but it's three mana, and really all you get is that extra land and a scry, too. I don't, I don't think it's going to be used that much. Um, Edelano Philosophy. The one for a one-two is, is not bad, especially in blue. Uh, but you've got to sacrifice it and pay seven to draw three cards. I think it's a little pricey. Could be me. Another fruit. Like the fruit. All right. Stinging Lionfish. Uh, Banishing Light. Heroes of the Rebel again. Temple of Plenty. They reprinted the temples. They are just as bad as they were before. They have not gotten any better. So, <laughs> there's that. I think that's kind of a waste of a rare slot. I wish they'd have reprinted on McCommon. Uh, uncommon, I mean. Um, but, yeah. It is what it is. The islands look really sharp, too. I like the mountains the best. The islands, second best. Probably, probably the... Uh, Swamps and then forests and then yeah, I kind of hate the plains, but yeah, it's not bad. All right, so there you have it. There's a uh, there's the pre-release kit and the one extra pack from my uh, participation pack. Oh, almost forgot the foily guy. All right, what do you think it is? It's green. It's green. I don't see. Well, I see constellation, so it's con it's an enchantment, but it's not a god because I don't see the the fancy border. It is. Oh, the Dryad. Nice. Look at that. A foil Dryad to go with my uh, unfoil Dryad. Now that's nice. Um, yeah. We're going to just go ahead and uh, we're going to open this guy. <laughs> Normally I keep it sealed so I could seal it off, but something tells me I'm going to be able to deck with this guy. So there you have it. A foil Dryad of the Elysian Grove. All right, guys. I hope you liked the video. I really appreciate you watching. So uh, let me know in the comments how you did your pre-release or if you were able to get to one. And uh, yeah, let me know how you did. Love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. You guys take care. Bye.